Good evening. Welcome to Politics Tonight. I'm WGN-TV political analyst Paul Lisnick, and this is our nightly look at politics around our city, state, and nation. Now, our first story this evening, President Obama gave a pretty rousing speech to state lawmakers in Springfield yesterday. He outlined his hopes for building better politics here at home and across the nation. Well, obviously, it's an uphill battle in an election year that's seen ramped up rhetoric from both sides of the aisle, anger, insults, influence, and big money becoming all too common on the campaign trail. Well, the president says one of the best ways to fight back is to give more power to people who vote. If everybody voted, if a far larger number of people voted, that would overcome in many ways some of these other institutional barriers. It'd make our politics better. And that's why a third step towards a better politics is making voting easier, not harder, and modernizing it for the way that we live now. And while the Illinois primary is still a little over a month away, if you're planning to vote, you got to make sure you're registered by next week. In fact, Tuesday the 16th is the deadline to do so. Well, Nobody better to talk to on these kind of topics than Cook County Clerk David Orr. He's joining me tonight. He's over at the Tribune Tower. He has more on this. Clerk Orr, welcome back to Politics Tonight. Oh, my pleasure. You know, we always have these get-togethers this same time uh, of, of each election season, but it's always good to get dates out there. For folks who want to, you know, get registered, get absentee ballots, run through some of those dates so we know. Okay, first of all, three key dates for registration. February 16th is one, what we call traditional registration, where you can go to public libraries and city hall and all sorts of places, and where deputy registrars can still register people. That ends the 16th. Second key date is when early voting starts on the 29th of February. All the early voting sites, and I'm talking about in Chicago and Cook County and most places, we also have grace period going on there, which means people who didn't get registered by the 16th, they can go then to any of these sites all around the city and county and register there. And the third thing, and the new law some of you know about, is that if you miss these other great opportunities, you can go and register and vote on election day. We don't want to encourage people to wait because it may cause lines, but those are three good opportunities. I'm going to give you a fourth opportunity. What if I'm a young man or woman? I'm 17 years old. And of course, I'll put that out loosely for you, but give me some meat on those bones. Okay, so it's a good point. Another new law we've got is anybody who's presently 17 but will be 18 by November 8th, which is a presidential election, can register and vote in the March 15th primary. And to make it even easier, I think what you're hinting at is another new law we've got is online registration. You can grab your phone, your laptop, whatever it may be, look up cookcountyclerk.com, and you can register online. Thousands of people are doing it. It makes it easy. We've got thousands of 17-year-olds that are already registered. Had a great time at Evanston High School today doing it. Last week with Chicago Votes over at DePaul. A lot of young people are excited. And so if you're 18, of course, you can register anyway. But if you're 17, and you'll be 18 by November 8th, we want you registered and voting too. So if this is my first time that I'm voting, if they've never voted in a primary before, uh, people may not understand you go in, you got a little say. Give me a Republican ballot or give me a Democratic ballot. Maybe young people say, well, I'm an independent. And I don't want to choose. So what do we say to them? Well, I think what we say to them in Illinois, the law is when, when you ask for Republican or Democratic ballot, that does not commit you. That's not registration. You are not permanently in either party. So the way to look at it is, hmm, well, in this case, I'm going to pick a Republican ballot. Maybe next year I'll do a Democratic. But in a primary in Illinois, you have to choose one of the major ballots. Sometimes there's a third party like Green Party, but that's just the law in Illinois, and we don't want to confuse people. But again, because if they ask to pick either one of those ballots for the March 15th election, that does not commit them whatsoever in the future. All right. So they can take the Republican, the Democratic ballot. It doesn't matter. They can switch parties, so to speak, in the general election, That's go right. whoever they want. Or these third parties, whatever it is may happen. Let's turn to some That's election right. issues, because obviously you've been in politics a very long time in your career, and I just want to get your sense of Very long, yes. Yeah, I know. <laughs> hey, you were mayor of Chicago for a little while, right? You know, I always bring that up. That's right. All right. Never um, got the pay, though. That's right. <laughs> right. Hey, so the president was here yesterday and he talked about redistricting. And I've had folks on the show, you know, involved in the redistricting efforts. I wanted to get your thought on it because, you know, the president and others make the point. You can talk about having, you know, elections and that's why we don't need term limits and that's why we don't need redistricting. But some would say it's a rigged game. What do you think? You're the clerk. 
Uh, well, I, I certainly agree. I think we have lots of problems with redistricting. It's been a classic thing because there's a, obviously a battle between the two major parties. Uh, what the president was referring to, and this was particularly at the federal level, is that you've got places, and of course uh, both parties can argue about this, you've got places, for example, like Pennsylvania, where a lot more Democrats vote for um, offices in Pennsylvania Republicans, and yet the large majority of the congressmen happen to be Republicans. Uh, so when you, and both sides play this game, yeah. and that I think is what he's addressing, is we need to find fair ways to do it. Um, and we do have an awful lot of cases where there's no contest. And sometimes when there's no contest, it may be a good thing because people are satisfied with their particular political leader. But in many cases, it means they don't have to listen to the electorate. And I think that's the point the president was making. So I think there's a lot of reforms we made there. Yeah, he also talked yesterday, people talk about the 1%, right, all the wealth of 1%. He said, you know, if the 99% voted, it wouldn't matter how much money the 1% put in the election. Do you agree with that? Well, I'll put it like this. He's right that um, we have to overcome the increasing corruption of our campaign finance system. Um, I would hope if 99% voted, it would overweigh that. But if the 1% are all billionaires, uh, it's difficult. But the main thing is, and I think he was good on speaking about this, very important to me, is that the Supreme Court, and they do some good things, but this is one of the worst decisions in our history, basically acquainted free speech with money. If you got a lot of money, then you're to be listened to. If you don't, you're not to be listened to. You add that to these other decisions which uh, allow money that we don't know who it's coming from. This is really dangerous. It's one thing to say, you know, there's good millionaires and there's bad millionaires. But the bottom line is, if the public wants to support candidates and someone's getting a ton of money and you don't know where that money's coming from, you might support someone who's against everything you believe in, but you don't know it because you don't know who the money is backing that person. So yes, we need major campaign reform. We need to reverse Citizens United, support some of the small donor matching. There's a lot of things we can do there, but the trend we're on now is extremely dangerous and I'm glad the president's uh, talking about it. So the good news is we're in a presidential election year. That would suggest to folks who follow this, uh, like me, we're going to get good turnout, certainly higher in, in a presidential year than an off-presidential year. You're the clerk. Give me your expectations. Well, in uh, presidential, in, in, in November, um, usually it's over 70%. I think this year it's going to be a big, big turnout, like it was before. In primaries, like in 2012, uh, we only had a 24% turnout in Cook County. In 2008, when President Obama first ran, it was 50-some percent, so doubled, or 48 percent exactly. Um, so this particular prime, March 15th, I'm hoping for a better turnout because I suspect at this moment, it's a political judgment, that both parties will have a couple candidates in play. And that means if both the Democrat and Republican parties uh, have a race, that means more people will vote. You know, voters, you know, they like to vote if there's something exciting. In Cook County, for example, we have an extremely exciting state's attorney's race. You don't usually get that kind of competition in the, case, in the Democratic primary, because in this case, the Democrats generally won the, win these races. So those are reasons I think we'll, we'll have a, a fairly good turnout. But we don't get the kind of turnout that uh, we'd like, partly for the reason you mentioned earlier, Paul, and that is people, I don't want to declare a party. That's why I keep right. on telling them, you're not declaring a party, you're only asking for the ballot of your choice. And this year on the and Democratic that's side, there are some challenges in these county races. And you, some people, you're not the clerk for Chicago, you're the clerk for Cook County. And so let me ask you this, you mentioned the state's attorney's race. What do you, is the power of the Democratic Party what it once was? You know, now they said that nobody in the state's attorney's race, then they give it to Kim Fox, no to Dorothy Brown, then the, you know, yes to Dorothy Brown, then no to Dorothy Brown. Does that matter anymore? It certainly matters. In other words, I believe the, the notions that uh, both the political machine and the power of the Democratic Party are su significantly diminished are wrong, but it's not the same power it was before because if you have lots of money, you can go over. Part of the party means is if those people who pay attention, and it usually means there's per people that actually work the precincts or get out there. Uh, there's, of course, less of that than there was in certain parts of the city and county um, the Democratic Party or Republican Party in certain areas are pretty strong. It, and it's not what it once was. I think in this race, the endorsement from no endorsement to Kim Fox, that is pretty significant because in a primary, again, we're talking about a primary, fewer people vote. Yeah. Um, so it's significant, but it's too early to call that race. It's going to be a tough one. Just one last question. When President Obama ran, of course, he was hometown guy. That certainly explained 2008, 2012, nice turnouts. Does Hillary Clinton play as hometown woman this time around? 
Um, well, that's, that's what we don't know yet. Uh, you would think so. Again, it was more important for Barack in the general election, okay? Um, and remember, Illinois traditionally was kind of a democratic state. I'm not sure if that's the case anymore. We'll find out in November. Um, I think there'll be some home, home, you know, home, home field advantage, so to speak, for Hillary. I just don't know how far it goes, because the recent um, surprise in some of these elections, uh, I, don't, I really can't explain it uh, so far. Yeah. I mean, the fact that so far we've seen Bernie doing so well, Hillary uh, has a good national, um, perhaps, uh, perhaps lead, but uh, it's, it's, a, it's a wild year, as all the pundits are saying. We've not seen an election like this in a long, long time. All right, Cook County Clerk David Orr, thanks so much for your time. We'll, of course, stay in touch with you as we move towards our election day. Thank you, sir. You bet, Paul.